over the past years, I have tried a number of uh, things to try to get relief from my pain. My primary care physician um, sent me about four years ago for an MRI and uh, suggested then that I see a, an orthopedic surgeon, which I did. He prescribed or ordered um, SI injections and they didn't help at all and I didn't have a lot of confidence in, in his expertise. I went back to my primary care physician and she uh, suggested that I start taking Cymbalta, an antidepressant, and I said, well, I'm not depressed. And, and she said, well, sometimes it helps uh, situations like this. And so I started taking that and it did, it made a big difference. And so um, I have been taking that now for several years. Last year, my pain really started to to intensify, and uh, even with taking that, and so I, um, I actually decided to quit taking the Cymbalta, thinking that it just wasn't working anymore. But after I uh, quit taking it, I discovered that it was the pain that had gotten so much worse, and that the Cymbalta really was taking the edge off. It was in uh, August that I quit taking it, and I started taking it again in November and uh, when I did do that when I when I went to my doctor we had moved in in the meantime and I was going to a different uh, primary care physician in Kansas and uh, I told him that I needed to go back I, on a, I just all the time either felt like I was either going to cry or throw up it hurt so bad and so um, I did start taking it again and it it takes it just takes enough of the edge off that I can live with this pain, but again, it's not something that I look forward to living with for the rest of my life. And so uh, my husband suggested then at that time that we start from square one and just try to figure out um, what the real cause, the root cause of the pain was. Um, my primary care physician sent me for an MRI um, and the results of that showed severe stenosis and, um, and he recommended that I go to um, a larger city and um, see a neurosurgeon. And so I did do that. I went to the neurosurgeon and um, he ordered a, uh, a myelogram and, and a CT scan. And that showed um, the, the spurs and the, the other problems there. And so he uh, referred me to an orthopedic surgeon in that same city. The orthopedic surgeon that I saw uh, said that he would not be able to help me because of my scoliosis. And until that time, I didn't even realize I had scoliosis. It's a lateral. I would always assumed that scoliosis was kind of a humpback. And uh, I've learned a lot about it in these past few months. But he said that if he were to do surgery, and do the laminectomy that would uh, remove some of that stabilizing bone in my spine that uh, due to my scoliosis it wouldn't be stable enough to support me any longer and so he sent me to an orthopedic surgeon who specializes in spinal deformity I, I began seeing him um, in January and um, he is the one that will be performing the surgery tomorrow I've had a number of tests. I've had another CT myelogram. I've had, it seems like dozens of x-rays there, but, um, and uh, just a number of tests. And I feel very confident in his um, expertise and his record. And I look forward to um, having good results from this surgery. My family does have a history of uh, blood clots. I have never personally had one, but that was one thing that I brought to the attention of the um, people that were doing my pre-admittance uh, testing and going through the pre-admittance procedures that um, is something we want to be sure to stay on top. Um, there's not a lot more that I can add at this point that will be helpful to someone else who's in this uh, position. I'm sure I'll think of things later. I don't expect that I personally will be able to update um, this until after my surgery 
probably several days after. My daughter will um, record her observations and the things that um, she is hearing from the doctor and that she's seeing with me. She's going to be spending um, pretty much all of her time with me over the next several days. Her mother-in-law is coming to take care of the of my grandchildren and, uh, and so that's um, a real blessing. I'm, I'm so thankful for that. We do uh, trust in the Lord completely and uh, we know that um, whatever happens that we're going to give Him the glory and, uh, and so He's brought us to this place and I'm, I'm really confident that, uh, that, as I said, whatever happens is, is what is supposed to happen. Um, we're praying, of course, that it is relief from this pain and a successful surgery um, and a quick recovery without any complications, but um, we'll just see what's ahead for us. The one thing that uh, my surgeon did say is because of the the proximity of the osteophyte or, spo or bony spur in the L3, L4 area that um, there's a good chance there could be some spinal, uh, spinal fluid leakage. And, uh, but um, he said, we'll just have to see. It, it's, it actually appears to, to be resting on the spinal cord and could have uh, kind of grown into that dura that covers it or, um, or the dura could tear um, as they're removing it. So we'll just, you know, they'll cross that bridge when, when they get to it. But um, that could mean that I might need to lay flat for 24 to 48 hours after surgery to uh, allow that to heal which um, could be, you know, somewhat of a complication as far as the potential for blood clots. But um, as long as they're aware of that, um, then I think that uh, everything will work out fine. So again, I hope this is going to help you. I, I'm sure I'm going to look pretty rough <laughs> next time you see me, uh, but uh, it, it's just part of the process, and, uh, and I will talk to you later. Thanks.